Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this small wall unit with a removable drawer and the unit measures 63 millimetres high by 38 millimetres wide by 15 millimetres deep and that's two and a half inches high by one and a half inches wide by just under five eighths of an inch deep. Okay, so for this project I've used a softwood called a besh. Um, that's spelled O-B-E-C-H-E, a besh. And um, using three different thicknesses, so 1.5 millimetres or 1 16th of an inch, which is this. Um, 2.5 millimetre for the top and bottom of the piece, but you could still, you could just use 1.5 millimetre for the top and bottom as well. And that's... Um, three thirty seconds of an inch um, and then I've just used a really thin veneer which is even less than a millimetre thick and that's um, 0 0.7 0 0.87 of a millimetre thick um, probably about one thirty second of an inch so really thin just as a veneer um, on the front of the drawer and then you'll obviously need a ruler for measuring and um, cutting the wood along with your craft knife this is a Swan Morton knife and it takes 10 A blades. Always put a new blade in at the start of a project when it starts to catch or drag against the wood, which means um, it's going blunt. Pencil, keep it nice and sharp for more accurate marking. Um, your choice of paint, I just th these Faro and Ball sample pots are really good, but it's just a normal household emulsion. Um, if you want to do like a two-tone effect or, or varnish it completely, I just use again a normal household um, interior varnish. Glue, my favourite Gorilla Wood glue because it bonds really quickly. Um, to score the um, grooves in this back panel, I use um, a flathead screwdriver along with the steel ruler brush there obviously for when you're finishing the pieces. Um, I've used two grades of sandpaper um, and I sort of cut them up into these tiny pieces because they're, they're easier to use and I use a 120 grade which is like a, a medium grade and then a 500 which is a nice fine grade for sort of finishing um, after painting. And then finally a um, draw knob and I've used a 2.5 millimeter draw knob. It's a wooden turned knob and these are actually available on my um, Etsy shop and I'll put the link below for that. Um, but you could use a bead. Um, if you're using a bead just stick it on after you've painted. And then in the um, cutting list, which is coming up, I advise you to cut the pieces for the drawer after construction of the unit. And that's just because if you sort of slightly misplace, uh, particularly this shelf here, that will make the drawer opening sort of narrower. So if you've already cut the drawer, you'll have to redo it. So it's, it just makes sense to cut it after you've constructed the shelf. And that goes for sort of any drawers um, when you're making a piece of furniture. I think that's everything you'll need. So once everything's cut, you just want to start by sanding the edge of each piece and just going in one direction along your sandpaper so as not to round the edges. so and I've done all the other pieces and then we're going to start by scoring the grooves into the back panel so take your ruler and pencil and I just want to begin by making a pencil mark along the center of the short edge and this is 38 millimeters wide or an inch and a half so we want to make a mark at 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch and at the top and bottom of the piece just a faint pencil mark and then do another one in the centre um, of that, so, so quarter, so that's nine and a half and about three eighths of an inch. Oops. Uh, 
and then the other quarter. Okay, and then to make the groove, I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to use the very sort of corner of the head and line up your ruler just slightly below the pencil marks you've just made and that's just to cater for the thickness um, of the screwdriver and then just make a very faint groove just go along lightly to start with and then you can go along sort of one or two more times and that just makes a nice groove in the piece there and then do the centre one And you might just want to turn the piece round to do the other one, otherwise the ruler will rock on the edge there. And again, just below that pencil mark. And then just take a piece of a small piece of sandpaper and fold it into a crease, and then just want to work it along the grooves. And this will make them slightly deeper and just get rid of any rough edges. Okay. And now we're going to make um, pencil marks for the placement of the shelf of, of the shelf and the top sort of top of the drawer open in there. So turn the piece onto its side and you want to make pencil marks um, 21 and a half millimetres and 42 and a half millimetres from this top edge. So 21 and a half and 42 and a half. I know using the half measurement sounds strange. You think, well, why don't you just round it up? But because the wood's one and a half millimetres thick, this just makes it equal. So 21 and a half and 42 and a half and then just continue those lines across just very faintly and I'm going to do the same on each of the side pieces so 21 and a half 42 and a half on the other side and then draw those lines across and then on each piece I'm just going to do the lines onto the, the edge of the piece of wood and then when we come to place the shelves that will just help us get them straight and this one as well 21 and a half 42 and a half onto the edges of the piece. Okay, now I've dispensed some glue here onto a piece of card, a piece of cereal packet, and we're going to begin by attaching this left-hand side piece to the back piece. So I'm using a cocktail stick to apply glue along the edge of the back piece. And then you want to just glue the side into place. Just hold it into place for a second. And then you can use another cocktail stick just to remove the excess glue from along that join. Like so. Now take one of your um, pieces, and this is this will be the top piece. We're just going to join that on the inside edge of that piece there. 
I'm just going to sand that edge because it's just a tiny bit wider. So then apply glue to one short edge and one long edge. And then glue that piece into place so that it's flush with the top of the side piece and the back piece. You can just check that by running your finger along that top edge. Just press that into place. And again, use the cocktail stick to move the glue. Now we're going to attach the shelves. So again, apply glue to one short edge and one long edge. And then these sit just above that pencil line we made. So you can just see the pencil line below the shelf. And that's that small mark there we made on the front of that shelf will just help lining that up at the front. Just press that into place and then again remove the excess glue. You can sand off excess glue, but it's just easier to remove it while it's still tacky. And the next shelf. And again, just above that pencil line. And this is where I was talking about the size of the drawer. Um, I'm not cutting it until after we've done this because if I went slightly lower or slightly higher then that will affect the size of the drawer opening. And then we want to attach the bottom piece and that will sit on the inside those pieces there. And again, just make sure that's flush with the bottom just by running your finger along there. And press that into place. I'm just going to remove the excess glue from inside. And then want to apply glue to all of these outside edges. And then we'll attach the final side piece. Again, you've got your pencil marks there just as a guide to make sure everything's staying square. And if not, you can just slightly push it into place while the glue's still tacky. Just squeeze that together. And I'm just going to use, you can use clamps, but I prefer masking tape for these smaller projects. I'm just going to apply a piece over that side. Oops. 
pull it nice and tight. that side as well just to keep that bottom in place. And then just finally remove the glue from inside. You can just put that to one side until the glue is dried. So once you've given enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and then just sand the piece on all sides just to make sure we've got a nice flush unit. Um, do the front and back, just go around in a circular motion. And on the back as well. And then you can do the top and bottom just going along in one direction so as not to warp the piece and sometimes when you remove the masking tape you get sort of splintering um, on the edges so just do the sides as well and again just in the one direction now with the cutting list I advise you not to cut the pieces for the drawer until after construction of the unit and that's just like I said earlier in case this shelf here, the drawer is going in here, has just been placed slightly higher or lower and then that would mean our drawer would be the wrong size. So the depth and the width should stay the same so it's just the height you want to double check so just measure that opening and that's as it should be, so that's 13 millimetres, so the drawer would be 12.5 millimetres high. Always deduct half a millimetre because then the drawer will open and close easily. So whatever the height is there, just, to, just, just adjust that um, on the measurements that I've given and on the side pieces and obviously on the back piece as well. The, like I said, the depth of the drawer and the width will remain the same. So I've cut the pieces here and I've just sanded on each edge. So to construct the drawer you just want to begin by applying glue to each edge of the base piece. and then attach a side to each edge the other side and then that can just be put to one side to dry otherwise it will just fall apart when you try to attach the front and back. And I've got one here that I did earlier. So then just apply glue around those front and back edges. like that and then just attach those and just make sure that the sides are flush with the side of the drawer and just squeeze that together and again that can be left to one side to dry and then when it is completely dry I've got one here that I made earlier again you can sand as we did with the unit on all edges 
and I've actually already done this one so just to show you um, again circular motion on the top and bottom and one direction on the sides like so and then the draw moulding again don't cut until you've done the draw because that will be um, a slightly different size depending on the height of your draw and this is using the thinner wood so this is less than a millimetre thick and we're just using it as a veneer so hold it in your hand and just gently round over each edge so just sort of sweep the sandpaper over the edge and that will create a nice rounded edge and the reason I'm not doing it sort of on the desk is because this is so flimsy it will just, it'll just break bottom edges as well. You can just go along holding the paper at an angle. rounded edges and then apply glue to the back of your moulding so the unshaped side and then just attach that to the front of the drawer leaving an even border around all edges and you don't need to measure you can just do that by eye Press that into place and when you're attaching a thinner wood to a thicker wood it will curl upwards as the glue dries so we will um, just hold this together with clamps or in this case I'm going to use clothes pegs because they've got a sort of wider surface area let's get rid of that excess glue and then just put the pegs over like so you can see they've got that nice flat square edge in there so just holds it into place and again put that to one side to dry and I've got one here that I did earlier and now we can attach our draw knob so begin by making a central pencil mark um, across the length of the draw so that's 37 and a half, so it's going to be 18 and three quarters, so just under 19. Just a faint pencil mark across there, and then turn the drawer, and you want to do a pencil mark in the centre. So that'll be about six and a half there. And then I'm using this mini drill, and there's a 1.5 millimetre bit in there. And just put it over the pencil mark and try not to press too hard Keep twisting until you're all the way through Oop. <laughs> and then I normally just twist that round just to make the hole a tiny bit wider and I'm using here this 2.5 millimeter wooden knob and these are available on my Etsy um, store so I'll put a link at the bottom and before applying the glue just check that that fits just need to sort of twist it round in there a bit and then you just want to apply a tiny dab of glue just over the hole like that and then just work the draw knob in And you might just have a tiny little overlap inside but that's okay because no one will see that and just get rid of that excess glue
like that. And there's our drawer. And then before painting, we're just going to prepare um, the top and bottom pieces, which we've got here, and they were cut from the 2.5 um, millimeter wood. And we want to create a beveled edge on one long side and on both sides, both short sides. So hold it against the sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you, keeping it at that angle. You can see that's just starting to create a nice beveled edge there. Let's do a few more sweeps. And then you can just go along that way just to tidy up the edge. And then you want to do the sides as well. Just keep checking to see if you're getting a nice even bevel. And you want to do that with both pieces and then we'll attach them to the unit. Okay, so I've beveled one long edge and both short edges of the top and bottom pieces and now we're going to attach them to the unit. So just take out the drawer, put that to one side and then I want to apply glue to the top and bottom of the unit. And then you want to attach the top and bottom pieces so that the back is flush with the back of the unit and that there's an even overhang either side. So that should be square with the back of the unit. And then these bevels should be sort of overhanging evenly at the sides. And then the bottom piece. And you can press that down on your worktop just to make sure those back pieces are flush with the back of the unit. Just remove the excess glue. And then I'm going to apply masking tape and clamps to hold those into place over each end pull that quite tightly and then I'm just going to use clamps as well just so that the front edges um, don't start to curl upwards over there like that. And then that can be left to dry. And if you want to do the sort of two-tone um, unit where you've got the varnish top and bottom, I would advise varnishing, um, varnishing them separately. So paint the unit in the drawer and then varnish these. And to do that, um, I use masking tape to make a sort of handle. So apply it to the beveled side of the wood because we don't need to paint that because that's the piece that's attached to the unit and just make a little tab like that and then just use a couple of extra pieces of masking tape just to hold that into place 
and then you can varnish it without getting your fingers dirty. So you'll varnish all of that edge and then around these edges here that will be visible and the back as well needs to be varnished and that just makes it easier to do that. Once the glue has had enough time to dry, just remove the masking tape and then just um, gently sand to remove any um, sort of pulls that the masking tape has left and the piece is then ready for paint. And when I'm painting I tend not to paint inside the drawer opening as it will reduce the opening size and the drawer may not fit back in neatly. And here are the completed shelves. And on the painted one, um, I did two coats, sanding gently in between coats. And that's where these smaller pieces of uh, sandpaper come in useful, because you can roll them up and then you can work them um, sort of inside the, the shelf areas. And with the two-tone one, I've just left one uncompleted. Um, so I painted the unit in the drawer and varnished the top and bottom using the little um, tab trick that I showed you earlier and then they'll just be attached as we did earlier um, with the green shelf.